has a motecon gone rogue? Could protecting lives uh, while maintaining peace in the community have gone wrong with these men? Are they the next SARS? What really is a motecon? And deal or no deal is the question everyone is asking as regards the IPPIS and the non-academic staff union of universities. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mariana Cole. The aftermath of a clash between operatives of the Oyo State Security Network, popularly known as Amotekun, and some Fulani clashed in uh, Ibarapa in Oyo State, left several people dead and properties destroyed. In an associated development, uh, Nobel laureate Wallace Inka has warned Amotekun not to transform into another form of the special anti-robbery squad SARS. He emphasized the need for ethical training and of course this is the subject of our conversation this evening now to discuss this we're being joined by um, Dixon Osage he is a security analyst and of course he is a private security operator um, it's good to have you join us Dixon thank you Mary Ann nice being here great um, of course uh, Amoteko may not necessarily be operating in Lagos state but uh, we know that when Amoteko was put together um, it whipped up a lot of sentiments. There were several reactions from different quarters as to what could become of Amatekel. Now, a few months down the line, here we are talking about a level of high-handedness. I'd like to know from you, as a person who handles security, and looking back from October 20, where we're still having to deal with the fact that people were protesting against a rogue police arm, which is called SARS. And now Professor Wolishenka is speaking about this. What, what, what's your take on the recent situation in Amotekun? All right, uh, Mary Ann, thank you very much. Uh, uh, the report coming from the camp of the Amotekun is not a good report, and uh, you rightly understood uh, this year the reason why Nigerians uh, went on the streets uh, in protesting against the NSAS movement. Uh, here we have Amotekun uh, reporting. Uh, uh, you know, justice uh, jungle, you know, uh, taking out human lives uh, on their own uh, authority. Well, I agree with uh, Professor Wale Shoika uh, because uh, uh, he uh, gave out his statement and uh, his uh, underlying statement is all about ethics, you know. Uh, ethics, ethics, ethics is very essential. And that is why we need to also understand uh, the kind of training uh, these Amotekun guys uh, received uh, because I had earlier suggested to, to uh, your state government uh, to ensure that these guys are trained on crisis management and uh, crime and incident in procedures, you know, there are procedures in a crime scene. So what are the trainings they undertake? Because the level of their training is going to determine uh, the level of their uh, duty. Because if they are not well trained, uh, definitely we're going to experience what went wrong uh, during the Bakasi days, you know, in the early 90s, the late 90s, uh, in Anambra State, where we have the Bakasi boys, you know, carrying our job with justice. The essence of uh, community policing is not all about jungle justice. The essence of community policing is for you and I to live in peace and harmony, for you and I to breed security to the barest minimum. D Dixon, are you, are you insinuating in any way that these people were not properly trained before being released into um, protecting or securing the people in your state? Is that what you're insinuating? I, 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 will, I will come on, I will arrive at that uh, 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 position, and that's my position, because uh, I see the reason why uh, some group of guys came into existence uh, not so long, and uh, all of a sudden uh, they are taking human lives at their own will. Uh, you know, we must understand the fundamental reason of security. The essence of security is to protect you and I. So uh, engaging the enemy, we need to get clarity of what went wrong between Amoteko and the Fulani Hessmen. Uh, who suffered losses? Is it the Amoteko that suffered losses, or was it the Fulani Hessmen that suffered losses? And if it was the Amoteko or Fulani people that suffered losses, where did this engagement took place? Did this engagement took place in an urban space? Urban space like in the forest, in the bush? Or did it take place uh, in, in the city? But from what I understood, I think it took place in the community. So uh, for me, I'm going to uh, draw this line of uh, mystic uh, to training because training is very essential. 
And uh, we need to also see their process assets, that is their policies and procedures. And uh, we need to uh, you know, engage people like this. Uh, I'd like to talk more about the modus operandi and you know, training process. You, you are saying that uh, maybe that they made some mistakes in, in the recruitment and the training process. But let's just quickly move away from Amoteko and talk about the Nigeria Police Force, who somewhat have gotten some level of training as to, you know, something that you are also saying that, you know, there is a modus operandi. They have been trained. Um, but then we see the same level of high-handedness in the police. Is it, really, is it really about the training process or is it about the fact that a man wears a uniform and it signifies that the person is powerful and so they can do whatever they want, even after they know what their training is, they still throw caution to the wind. Could that be the situation? Okay, uh, Mary Ann, let me, let me clarify what I'm trying to say uh, in line with also Professor Woloshenga. Uh, you see, uh, what went wrong within uh, the NSAS was two uh, mechanisms. There is uh, command negligence and uh, uh, lack of uh, operational uh, procedures and maintenance. Command negligence in the sense that uh, in any given situation, whoever goes against the rules and regulation of a given entity must be punished. Punishment is an essential part of development. Punishment is beautiful. In your businesses, in your area of responsibility, in your places of work, punishment stands for two grants, for specific deterrence and for general deterrence. Specific deterrence in the essence that whoever commits a crime is punished. Whoever commits that crime that is punished will send a message to others. That is general deterrence. Now, coming back to the end fact, what went wrong was command negligence. They were neglected for so long. These officers were taking laws into their hands, killing Nigerians at will, carrying out jungle justice without anyone being held accountable. That is command negligence. Now, Amoteko coming on board in this nearest time, and they are carrying out such kind of activities, I will align that to command negligence. And I will call on Colonel Olayinka. He's an ex-military officer. He knows better. He knows what fire discipline is. At any given time, before you give your uh, officers the order to release gunshots or to fire uh, at the enemy, there must be what we call fire discipline. Without fire discipline, these guys will not succeed. Fire discipline in the sense that, are you applying that force reasonably? Is that force justifiable? Is that force applicable to the threat that comes your way? If those threats are not applicable and are not reasonable and not justifiable, there is no need for a motorcycle to be applying force at this given time. The essence of security is for you to get hold of the enemy. It's not for you to kill the enemy. It is only when your life is threatened, that is when you can apply maximum force. So that is why I say the problem here in Amoteko is command negligence and uh, lack of uh, process, which is to talk about training, because they need to go back to the drawing board. I will call on Colonel Yenka, Alainka to go back to the drawing board, analyze what went wrong, and motivate these guys, and let them know, hey, guys, we are just starting off. Let's not get our integrity. Well, I did, talking about the uh, uh, Connell, I, I did try to reach out to him because he was supposed to be on this show today, but unfortunately he declined last minute. Uh, I just had to put that in. Um, I had a conversation with another elder statesman and he was giving me uh, setting examples like when the OPC was um, in place. It, it, they were doing good things, but then high-handedness also came to play. Um, you know, they started taking out personal vendetta on people and that was when, you know, everything went wrong. Now, in training these men, once again, is there a clear-cut um, demarcation between what they do and what the police does? Because for me, if you're giving a Amotekun guns, it means that they're simply, you know, uh, assuming the uh, position of a police officer. Should there not be a, a, like a modus operandi, for example, the NSCDC um, works in tandem with the police force. They're not the police. They know where their duty stops and where the police's duty starts. In terms of Amotekun, um, again, I, I don't want to sound like a broken record. Do they really know where their duty stops and where the police's duty starts? If they're having guns, does that not mean that it's okay to shoot if you have if you feel, like the police will say, if you feel threatened, shouldn't they be assisting the police instead of being the police? Uh, Mary Ann, this is a very, very technical and intelligent question. Thank you very much. Uh, you see, first of all, uh, when we come to management of security, uh, we need to understand the four stages. 
uh, we have the inactive stage, we have the uh, preactive stage, we have the reactive stage, and we have the proactive stage. You know, the police system is a form of responsive stage. That is a, a reactive stage. Uh, when crime go goes wrong in our community, the police responded. The police respond. I mean, you see, uh, why are they responding? Because they have no um, a technical mechanism in place for them to curtail crime in progress. That is why we are suffering from the state of insecurity because we are practicing a responsive policing system, not a proactive policing system. Now, when it comes to Amoteco, Amoteco is a, um, a kind of uh, a regional uh, security strategy, and their essence is not to be responsive or reactive or uh, inactive. Their essence is to be proactive. That means they need to go before the loss. When we talk about proactive, they're supposed to go before the loss. They're supposed to go before the occasion of crime. They're supposed to go before the occasion of uh, criminal activities. That is being proactive. Mm -hmm. And when you're being proactive, that means you're going to work in line with the police that will respond to your proactiveness. So if Amotekun's sole responsibility is to be proactive, that is going before criminals, curtailing criminal in progress, they need to have a kind of synergy with the Nigerian police. Having a synergy with the Nigerian police, if they perceive a crime in progress, they call the Nigerian police uh, uh, to come and respond. They don't have the powers, constitutional-wise, to shoot at anyone. They don't have the powers, constitutional-wise, to kill any citizens. They don't have the power in any, uh, any wise to carry out uh, illegal activities. It is only when your life is at risk, even myself as a private citizen, it is only when my life is at risk I can apply the use of force, and you can see that in Section 281 of the uh, uh, criminal, uh, uh, criminal Code. So we need to know where they are, where, like you rightly said, where do the duty stop? Where do the duty of the police start? The places where the amortic duty stop is after apprehending the criminal. Once you have the criminal in your custody, you have to dispense and hand over that criminal to the Nigerian police with proper documentation. But however, we must not rule out the fact that you might come across fire or come across ambush. Mm -hmm. Now, in a situation whereby as an Amoteku you are going on patrol, you come across ambush from the enemy, there is no any justification for you not to respond. You must respond to that ambush because you must be alive mm -hmm. to protect others. So security systematic, Amoteku must be very, very proactive in discharging their duty, and they must play by the rules and regulations of the existence of that organization. If they take a departure from that existence, from that rules and regulation, there's going to be a problem. Uh, uh, Mary Ann, trust me, there's going to be a problem. Well, the governor of the state, um, Governor McIndy, has... Uh assured the people of Oyo State that he's going to do everything within his power to make sure that Amotekun is probed. In fact, he has said that the killings uh, that have been done back to back by Amotekun um, is going to be pro uh, probed. And he assures the people of the state that, you know, the seeming situation that they're facing will be addressed. He, he, and for me, I mean, I don't live in Oyo State, but the people who live in Oyo State, how do you think as a security person, the Oyo State indigents should perceive this message? How should they take it with a pinch of salt? Should they believe him? Knowing that they had expressed some form of dissatisfaction at the beginning, um, this assurance, is it good enough? Is this something that the people should hold on to? Should they believe the government that they would do something to change the situation of things? Or is it just one of those government um, messages that are put out to placate the people, you know, in the meantime? Uh, Mary Ann, Governor McIndy uh, yesterday uh, registered uh, his displeasure on what went wrong uh, in the engagement between Amoteko and the Fulani Hetzman, as uh, purportedly reported. Uh, yes, here in Nigerian crime, we are very good at condemning incidents when it comes. Uh, I don't believe in condemnation of incidents. I believe in carrying out actions on any incident that went wrong. Now, for this Amoteko to succeed, the governor needs to get all those uh, responsive team of Amoteko arrested. Get them arrested with immediate alacrity. Get their statement, ask them what went wrong, ask them what was, was the engagement uh, uh, method, methodology. Uh, because as a security uh, professional, which they are, uh, they need to play by the rule, like I rightly said. Because if you don't play by the rule, you're going to lose confidence uh, from the people. Uh, you know, Nigerians, we are very sensitive, you know. Our first impression matters, you know. They must be very careful of their image, you know. Image is a reputation, it's their reputation. And that's what we call intangible assets. Their reputation is their intangible asset. If they gamble with that intangible asset at this beginning, they are going to suffer setbacks in their operations. So Governor, uh, Governor Mackinder, as he rightly said, let him go ahead with 
uh, is a board of inquiry. Let them inquire what went wrong uh, to this uh, incident. And Nigerians should be briefed on what went wrong so that we'll be able to be in the picture. And we must not write up the Amoteku. Uh, we need to also, you know, vet those guys that were enlisted into this Amoteku properly. Uh, when we vet them properly, check their psychological mechanism, check their physical well-being, and check their mental well-being. Because you cannot project people on the public space to protect Nigerians. You must carry out a psychological evaluation of these guys. Carrying out a psychological evaluation is very essential so that we will not suffer menace from a madman. Dixon, I'd like to wrap this up a bit quickly before we do that. Um, you, you just took the words right out of my mouth. I was about to say, oh, maybe we need to do a, a psych evaluation of sorts, as we always say for the police and the army. But in this instance, there, at the beginning, like I said, people didn't like this idea. Some people were for it. There are people now who are saying that this was a political statement from the Oyo State governor and the Southwest. But with all that's happened, can we safely say that this was a mistake uh, or maybe it could have been done better? In closing. Please, can you take a question again, please? So I'm saying that there are critics who have said over time that this Amotecon situation um, was a mistake. Some say it was a political statement from the Southwest. Um, but can we safely say now, with all that's happened, that it was a mistake, or maybe the government could have gone about it the, the, another way, and maybe it wouldn't have turned out this bad so early? Very Ann, uh, trust me, uh, as a security professional with uh, over 23 years in industrial security and military security, uh, I must tell you the truth that uh, the existence of Amotecon uh, is a, a welcome development. Uh, because let's just look at the ethnography of Nigeria. Nigeria is sitting on 923,000 square kilometers. We have over 371 tribes. We have over 250 uh, ethnic groups and over 520 languages. Nigeria is a country with diverse uh, uh, people. Uh, the security system we are practicing is a centralized security system, uh, which is not working for us. Uh, the Nigerian police needs to be decentralized. I have said this on, um, on many platforms. Uh, uh, the Amotecon is a work on development. Let's not write them up on, on what went wrong. Are you with me? Let's not write them up on what, on what went wrong. Uh, it's, it's good it happens at this early stage so that they'll be able to uh, buckle up and uh, carry out uh, their duty effectively. Uh, the Southwest have suffered a lot of uh, criminal activities, a lot of kidnapping, a lot of uh, terrorism and assassination. Uh, we cannot let that to continue because our policing system are not uh, capable uh, to curtail uh, the threat of insecurity, uh, looking at uh, okay. uh, 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 population-wise, you understand? Right. We have about 370,000 police governing about, over uh, 200 million country, uh, uh, people in the country. is not really uh, okay, an error. So let's leave a second at that and uh, let's give them a second chance. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Thank you very much. Dixon Osage is a security consultant and he has 23 years experience at the job. Thank you for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Well, we'll take a short break now. And when we return, we'll be taking a look at the university workers. Yes, the non-academic workers as they start a three-day national protest against the government's handling of the very controversial IPPIS. We'll be right back.